I went on vacation this one time and went to this beach. It was a beautiful and it was, it was a really cool beach, very beautiful. And it was it was just um, it was just us, just our group that was there, you know. Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said, like you're on this big planet and like all these locations people go to, and it's kind of a cool thing to be like, it's just us, man. <laughs> I just think it's it's kind of cool in the, in some of these games where like if if there are only like 10 people playing it in the world like this in a weird way it's like kind of awesome <laughs> we could be doing anything but we're the people that are here there is a form of multimedia entertainment beyond that which is good these games are as vast in number as they are terrible they dwell in the dark recesses of history unearthed from the pits of the bargain bin these are the games of horror. This is Garbage Game Night. Welcome to Garbage Game Night, a podcast about games that end up in the discount bin. They have died, they have fallen off, plus L plus ratio plus other gamer terms. But does that mean they're bad? Usually, but we take a look at them and bring them back from the dead in ways that no one ever asked for. But I'm gonna need some help to double tap this one. So joining me is Frank, how you doing tonight? I'm doing great. Excellent. And uh, my sole other guest, Tom, how are you? I'm doing super well, man. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. So the last game we played on G... Oh, by the way, I'm doing great. Doing so good. We took a Not going to ask. Not okay. gonna, I'm, I'm going to tell it. the listeners anyway. <laughs> you know what? Uh, if you're listening at home and you care, uh, leave a comment saying <laughs> the, thank you, Chris. I'm just really... The problem sorry is, for is it's time. baited. It's mm -hmm. baited with a point now, and it just seems cheap. It yeah, just seems cheap. Yeah, you guys are just so, uh, so morally superior that you... Yeah, you I don't need a, The game need is your... sacred. You don't want to get a point off of that, you know? Yeah, your... I'm not Hunter, all right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm only like calling out because I know he doesn't listen to the podcast. I think last time when I said I'm fine and he didn't ask, he said, I don't fucking care. I'm pretty sure that's why, and I've suspended was... him for an episode. <laughs> oh, I thought that was me. Uh, so you, you've all said it at one point or another. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, some internet troubles last time, um, so we delayed it a week, and uh, yeah, but we're back, stronger than ever. Uh, the last game we played, though, on GGN was Aliens, Colonial Marines. I was uh, I was really happy with how that one that one came out. We get to do a lot of gameplay, and I think tonight will be similar. Listen, I'm I'm a firm believer that any time that we do anything multiplayer, it's it's just going to be fun. I don't think we've done anything together that has uh, has not been fun. There was the one that you you weren't weren't here a lot for that Grace played. That was um, uh, Alone in the Dark. That one, oh, the yeah. network issues were so bad it was difficult to enjoy. But yeah, that, yeah, that one was only because of the network issues. Like when they were when it was fine, it was fun. But yeah, yeah as soon as the game started shit in the bed, yeah. So that I guess that was like that was yeah. probably the worst one. Yeah, that's but, yeah, so funny too because Grace loved it. <laughs> yeah, she enjoyed that. <laughs> yeah, like like to this day, like she'll be like. She'd be like, I don't get it. Like, they, I thought Chris was supposed to be bad games, but it was so much fun. Yeah, I'm, yeah I mean, when, when the game worked, it was fun, but it yeah. just didn't work a lot. I've actually, after we talked about Aliens Colonial Marines, I've, I've got Alien Isolation installed, and I think I may, may pick that up and play that a little bit tomorrow. I've, I stumbled nice. across some more people talking about it, and, you know, it's a, I think it's a good solution if you're looking to raise your blood pressure and give yourself a premature heart attack. So, yeah, it's um, getting a little yeah. spooky, you know? Yeah, a little spookums. It's like exercising, but you're sitting down and, and moving your fingers only. <laughs> Doctors probably wouldn't recommend it, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a doctor, I so maybe we, can't I maybe say. we can ask we can't a doctor. Say. It's up in the air, both sides this one, so... <laughs> Uh, before we get into the game we're doing tonight, let's do, I'm going to do this in one minute, one minute of gaming news where I'll hit you with everything that's been going on since the last podcast. So I'm going to put one minute on and see how fast I can get through this. You ready? Go for it. GameStop, a company gracious enough to give you $3 and spit on you your once played game and only exists due to a meme, has decided to jump into the NFT market right as it implodes upon itself. In a statement, they say their NFT returns power to the players, but nobody knows what the fuck that means. Also, Norman Reedus accidentally confirmed that Death Stranding 2 is in the works and Hideo Kojima seemingly acknowledged it. Leaks continue to come out about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the newest entry that will make you feel old and decrepit as you battle it out against Adderall 8-year-olds. There looks to be a Warzone 2 mode coming and the acquisition by Microsoft surprisingly appears to be on track still. Speaking of acquisitions, on again, off again Twitter buyer and god of weird crypto nerds Elon Musk tweeted today that Elden Ring experienced in its entirety is the most beautiful art I have ever seen. 
which okay <laughs> speaking of things so. that drive elon musk insane a qa group of employees at activision blizzard voted to unionize making them the first union at a big studio in the u.s and finally nintendo recently found out five percent of their company has been acquired by saudi prince and bonesaw enthusiast mohammed bin salman and is shutting down the e-payment options for ds and wii u today essentially removing quite a bit of digital media from the world i oof i was about five seconds over i'm sorry yeah. uh that'll wow. be uh minus one point for yeah, minus chris one and point for Plus me. one for uh, for Frank and myself. <sighs> I guess well, that's funny because only that's fair. me and Hunter are up there. Oh, oh, I erased Tom entirely. All right, I'll give a point to Hunter then. <laughs> Tom, Hunter just gets stuff in the mail. He's like, I wasn't even there that night. Yeah, but you won still. And, uh, oh, and Pac-Man items are being added to added to um, Fortnite. I, I wanted to include that for you, but there wasn't enough time. Uh, Ooh, Frank. Pac-Man, was, really? Yeah, Pac-Man. You can't be Pac-Man himself. I don't know how they would do Not that, yet. but Pac-Man items, yeah. So just uh, Eli, uh, one, a, a one-word answer will yeah. do n- no developing of this topic <laughs> okay <laughs> but, but elon uh, i don't know what i took from that is it's kind of that age-old controversy of can video games be art so just <laughs> quick quick fire to frank quick fire to chris one word answer can video games be art yes no yeah yeah Obviously. absolutely yes i mean yes i mean I elon musk is wrong here but yeah no, art, <laughs> games can be art. actually it's, it's such an objective statement though like you could just be like elon i guess you've just seen very little art in your that's, life that's that's yeah. the thing that stood out to elon, me it like... seems like you've been i don't know sheltered by some sort of parents who had some sort of emerald mine you know that uh, maybe was uh, benefited by apartheid i don't know but either way man maybe get that's out the some, thing you know? that stood out to me is that like i mean this is a person who has the access to anything in the world you could want you could get an audience with anyone do anything that you want and some things certainly more legal than others but for all that the things you could do in your life the the idea that elden ring is the most beautiful art that he's ever seen I don't know whether I'm like glad that like wow we all have access to something that's like that someone in that position considers the most beautiful art or um, or my reaction is oh that's it that's the peak of beauty art <laughs> so, I, don't, I don't know there was a really interesting I actually d- despise the guy uh, who said it but it was is still a valid point um I actually can't even remember his name but maybe maybe that's Perfect. a good thing maybe there's, <laughs> don't give him any credit but uh, no I just remembered uh, Dan Blizzard Blizzardman Blizzardman you know you've heard of him. The guy who owns Blizzard, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he, he, I went to school with his nephew, <laughs> Mike Activision. Yeah. <laughs> to, l- Mike l- Activision. Long story short, is just a, a guy who has and still does, um, you know, benefit from like you know extreme wealth. He's just very, sure. very, 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 very wealthy. And at first, he w- he was doing this interview about wealth and its experience on uh, for him. And it was, it was just kind of an interesting point that, like, at first I thought was very, like, I don't know, like, it's such a dick thing to say. And then I thought about it and I was like, man, maybe that's true. Is he was saying that when you're exposed or have access to, like, the highest levels of everything, mm-hmm. that it and the overall experience is that, like, it, that it cheapens life. And I'm paraphrasing a lot, but this idea sure. that, like, like, you can't experience, like, normalcy without being, like, oh, it's subpar to this other thing that I've done. And I don't know. I just think that like, at, like at first you're like, man, what a dick. But then you think about mm-hmm. it and you're like, you're like, maybe that would be like that. Maybe if like, it's just like if everything you've, all the food you have, you know, ever all the, yeah, everything's a five star world, restaurant. Yeah. Makes, makes me think of like Anthony Bourdain, like for him to, you know what I mean? Like to commit suicide. Like that guy had what, what I think any of us would be like, if, if he were handed that opportunity to be like, Hey, you want to live his life? I'd be like, yes, done. Yeah. Um, so, but for some reason, like, even with all of that, you're, you're able to, like, sink to these lows still. And I think that with, I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool. I think, like, for, I think your first interpretation was, like, right on. I don't know. I think it's cool that, like, we all have access to something that, like, someone who, like like you said, has access to so much is is able to be like, hey, this was, like, genuinely a really cool experience. And, like, that's pretty rare yeah. that we can be able to be like, oh, yeah, like, uh, you know. I enjoyed something to the same level of a billionaire, you know, like that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. 
Or, or so maybe give, he I'll just wants uh, maybe he just wants nerds to like him too. But you know, you know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that's that's cool that we're all in the same thing. Is that a flag operation? <laughs> huh? yes, really? Yeah. I think like, I feel like saying nerds the world's already like man him. actually yeah, didn't no, nerd, beat Elden Ring like in its entirety. <laughs> and he probably just watched a playthrough. All right. <laughs> he said he, actually he, in the follow up, he said he was gonna share his character build and stuff, and I just I, I don't care. Not. Oh no. <laughs> All right, well, that's stuff going on in the gaming world, but let's talk about what we're doing this evening. Uh, Resident Evil entered our hearts and maybe our brains in 1996 with the PlayStation 1 release. It's often credited with defining the survival horror genre, though I think the original father of survival horror goes to the less successful Alone in the Dark franchise, which we um, took a look into and looked at that original game back when we did uh, that Alone in the Dark game. Uh, shit. What was the oh, yeah. subtitle for that? Oh, it was just called Alone in the Dark. Yeah, it was just called Alone in the Dark. Yeah, the less what successful about the Alone in the Dark franchise. Who would that be? Uh, the mother of survivor horror. Uh, I think that would be Vampire Mommy, right? From um, Resident <laughs> Evil Village. <laughs> well, yeah. well, well answered. Well answered. Well done. <laughs> so, Wiki says it also returned zombies to pop culture. Which is a bold statement, I guess. I, I looked up what? I looked up films with the zombies in them, and like they list them by year in Wikipedia. And in 1994, there were two films that featured zombies in 1994. In 2015, there were 24. So maybe I don't. I mean, there certainly like have been more and more zombie films. Just, but the idea that like Day of the Dead, George Romero's films, like in like 68 and 70, I think, like they were popular, and then there was sort of a a lull in zombie activity, and they say. Uh, uh, that Resident Evil brought zombies back to the forefront. So I don't know, but it's uh, but it's the 20th anniversary of the franchise Resident Evil. So what do you do? Well, you got to go big. So so here we go. What we're playing tonight is Umbrella Core from the back of the digital box. Join the core. Umbrella Core is a new fast-paced third-person shooter set in the Resident Evil universe. The competitive online game will feature quick, intense matches and compact battle zones themed from historic Resident Evil environments such as the Umbrella Facility Map. Umbrella Core utilizes the Unity engine. Umbrella Corporation, a ruthless international pharmaceutical company, had been known for its genetic experiments and biological weaponry that led worldwide devastation, including the Raccoon City incident. Although the organization was brought down in 2003, its legacy of bioterrorism continued. In the present day, corporations with nebulous interests in bioweaponry have hired special forces for experimental battles in restricted virus-infected areas against other mercenaries. Pretty clear cut, right? Um, yeah, so that's what Umbrella, umbrella Core is. But, well, first, what is an Umbrella Core? First, it's it's core, like the Marine Corps, like the French word meaning a division of military group, not core of the planet. Although it's very confusing because if you know a little bit about uh, Resident Evil lore, you know about Umbrella Corporation. So you think, is this short for Umbrella Corporation? No, it's like core, like corpse without an E. I explained it to Matea, and she's like, like Umbrella Academy and Corpse Bride. And yeah, that actually makes more sense than Resident Evil lore. But um, we're going to take a look at the trailer here. I, I like how it's def the bullet is deflecting off his face and not his, uh, like, his oh, little, little deflector arm. arm. Oh, he has, a, yeah. he has a little glass thing on the side of it. But yeah, it do oh. definitely does look like it's his. He's got like a shield on his forearm and he's no, reflecting a right. bullet off of it. You're right. I, yeah. You know what? I take it back. Wow. I take it back. Dumbass comment. <laughs> take, yeah, gonna... a, take away a point. <laughs> yeah, and we got our we got our little Resident Evil 20th anniversary logo there. So this is the first trailer there. It's just some kind of slow motion running through very quick running through halls. Pickaxe like weapon called the Brainer. Teams of special forces going through uh corridors. Who doesn't love a good corridor? Using a zombie as a tactical shield, very cool. And you shot a guy in the back and his zombie jammer broke. Wow. And it's showing off some, you know, networking. It's gonna be online. Mm -hmm. And there's Umbrella Core, which the name does not show off. Uh, it doesn't lead with Resident Evil. It's not Resident Evil Umbrella Core. It's just uh, Umbrella Core, which is kind of an interesting move, being the thirtieth, the twentieth anniversary of Resident Evil. So I, I don't. I, I, I'm looking at it again. It's like a modified version of the Umbrella yeah. logo, I think. Yeah. Which is interesting. Mm -hmm. It's like. It's like it's connected, but not. Now, in, in Resident Evil lore, which I'm not going to... Look, I'm not going to profess myself to be an expert, and I think I've 
had my grubby little hands on every version of Resident Evil in some way, but um, I I don't know all the lore, and anyone who professes they do is probably lying to you because there's a lot of like DS games and oh man the the plot of this it's oof it's tough it's a lot like Metal Gear Solid <laughs> Umbrella Corporation at this ended point, right? I think so and Umbrella Corporation ended and there's a new Umbrella Core that's dedicated to ending bioterrorism I believe so is this the new logo is this something just for the game I sounds I don't, like an inside job I don't why care would you, why would you imagine like you're <laughs> you, you have a, you have a company that's it's done Nazis wrong it's Nazis too but yeah exactly time. exactly you're like I don't know guys maybe a new name <laughs> Frank, maybe Frank you just said it a thousand times better maybe, than I ever maybe, could have maybe a new well, name guys people so, no that was a no. million times better. That's exactly. Thank you, Frank. That was literally. No, we're exactly. the good Third Reich. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe. Oh exactly. God. That's exactly. <laughs> that right. was amazing. Guys, we already have all these mugs, though. What do we do all the mugs? <laughs> right. You know what? That's actually the really funny. Pads. That's literally what it was like, though. Is like the funding. They were like, "But listen, guys, we we got the umbrella symbol on everything." <laughs> You know, like, it's a lot of money that we spent on that. We got a, I don't know. I know I'm not allowed to award points, but if I could award a Frank a point for that, for just for just nailing it, is that I'll possible? Give, Am I Frank able to say something like Yeah, you can nominate I, can Frank, I sure. Pitch yeah, you can Frank nominate Frank. I've put a, board on the, a point on the board for Frank. Nominations. <laughs> I like that. All Thank right, you. Before... I'm really good at making references to the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, no, normally, every time preceding this time, I've been like, oh, God. <laughs> this time, I was like, what? Frank brought yes. up Nazi Germany again. <laughs> Oh, you got it. You got it you're right. <laughs> All right. So before we launch into this, did anyone know this game existed? Have you heard about it? Seen it anywhere? Umbrella Core. No. No. And, I don't think so. And Tom, someone who's played a lot of Resident Evil games, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I think um, I'm kind of lame in that I got more into them recently. You know, like for, for me, like when I started really getting like my teeth into it was when like co-op started becoming available and, and like doing that like i i had a lot of fun who did i play that with i don't even know not me i've never played a co-op game with you yeah um yeah and i uh you just played co-op of me you <laughs> fucking asshole just not one in particular we, it's fine we beat divinity which took how many hours of game maybe 100 maybe 100 hours <laughs> yeah like just an obscene amount of gameplay that we've had together um so i've actually I've i almost this... was like oh my god he's right <laughs> we've never played a game together <laughs> I uh, I played this game, uh, I want to say like almost half a year ago now when it was on sale and picked it up and was just like, I, God, I, I just really, uh, well, I'll save my thoughts for it. But uh, yeah, I've, I've played, I put a handful of hours into this one. It's, just, it's been an interesting experience. But um, how does the pitch for it sound? An online kind of third person deathmatch kind of game. It does have a campaign in it uh, that we'll take a look at a single player. It's kind of a fast paced Resident Evil shooter, which isn't the typical Resident Evil type game where, you know, normally you can serve ammo and rarely playing for speed. But um, how, how does it sound? Frank, I'll let you go first. Um, it sounds okay, you know. Okay. Uh, it kind of seems, you know, like how the uh, the aliens, colonial, colonial marines, you know, is like, oh, you're just like, you know, a soldier in the war, you know. So it's like, oh, this you're just a cleanup guy, you know. Yeah, but so you know, it's like I wouldn't expect much from the storyline, you know. Okay. <laughs> the fact that we're playing it, it's probably bad. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, if I didn't know we were playing on a garbage game night, I'd be like, oh, you know, maybe it's all right. You know, it's yeah. probably not the best game ever because the Resident Evil games are more about the story. Yeah, and they seem less about Resident the story, more about the could gameplay. Be all right. But it could, you know, it could still be fun. Yeah. <clears throat> I. I guess I, I have like two ones that inquiry, but then the other one would be like, I guess my main thought would be like, I think every time or at least over the years that I've seen that Resident Evil falls into like a deep criticism mm -hmm. is when they go fast, you know, like yeah. when they speed it up and you're right. Like it's not about like that scary resource management of like, Oh my God, how am I going to get through this situation? And like, you're the more you're able to kind of just like blast your way through everything. It's, less successful sure. um i know one of the recent resident evil games kind of switched between many different stories and like every time it went to like chris redfield's story it was like yeah that was six like, yeah like just 
and, uh, and there's a lot of complaints about like those sections just being like why what, you know why why are we here um and I, I would agree with that. I feel like for me, like what's most fun is when it, you're engaged in being like scared and like you know, sure. trying to navigate the situation and the story. Um, but my inquiry would be, I guess from the gameplay, it's making me feel like it's, a, it's just a big no. Um, is if in the multiplayer, can you be the zombies or is it only... No, um, no, you definitely can't be the zombies, which um, I think is always a missed opportunity. Uh, right? I'm, I'm a fan of that. <laughs> yeah. Keep moving. So uh, this game has a couple <laughs> modes we ought to acknowledge from the first, uh, from the main menu, we've got a tutorial to get the handle is control single player, then Resident Evil Online, which is going to be team deathmatch or survival. And they have a ranked mode as well. But uh, what I'll do so that we can kind of get on the same page. I think, Tom, I'll have you launch the game up and we'll watch you go through the tutorial. Um, and I say that because I think, Frank, you'll have a little bit easier time getting used to the controls, getting then that you know third person uh, oh, gameplay okay. a bit better hmm. on the con. Right. We're all going to play. Hmm. Just, I, I think, huh. it's just maybe you need to play. I'm a No Man's bit Sky champion time. and no man, you know, I play in third person. So, huh. Tutorial? Yeah. The music is very, uh, I like the music, you know, Resident Evil has... It's spooky. Yeah, it has that spooky, it, it's got the Resident Evil movie feel, for sure, the music. You're a Resident Evil movie feel. Kind of getting a okay. little Silent Hill vibes, too, I don't know. Sure. I was like, you know, Resident Evil was like a, a less, I mean, Silent Hill was like the spookier Resident Evil. I don't know which yeah. game came first. Yeah, Resident Evil always spooked me more. Than, I'm sorry, uh, Silent Hill always spooked me more than Resident Evil. It's, you know, it's zombies and mutants. But uh, Silent Hill, that's, that's some demonic shit. 15 out of 20 at a very normal slider. How do I <laughs> slide? Are you watching my mouse? Can you see that I'm, like, struggling? All right. Oh, it's very reactive. It is a fast-paced shooter. So it's telling you you have a, you have a zombie jammer. If it's damaged, the zombies will target you. Is zombie jammer is something that they all other Resident Evil games really wish they had. They kind of dissolve into these masses of flesh. Oh my god, is he oh, not dead? You got a zombie coming out of a mass of flesh. Hate it when that happens. Yeah, they just keep emerging from the primordial goo that's on the ground. I cleared the mission, but they're still gooping out. <laughs> it's a, are you reading the instructions there, Tom? Kill three zombies. But nope, you read the next words. Melee? Yeah. <laughs> Is that just a pile of human meat? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just a just a pile of uh, people people meat, <clears throat> and that's what where zombies come from. In case you didn't know, honey, you barely touched your people meat. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? Aiming speed's already low. <laughs> Fuck off. The, the camera and aiming speed is five out of nineteen. <laughs> a little too fast for my blood. Why nineteen? <laughs> yeah, like I, I, let's do you want to see? I just mean 19 is an arbitrary number. Let's like, see. Rounded let, well, out. Let's see how, but I also mean, see how obscenely fast this is going to be? Yeah, it depends on your mouse speed, too. But if you move your like mouse play area from one side of the mouse play area to the other side, how many times do you turn around? <laughs> <laughs> Spinning think, like a ah! fucking top. <laughs> All right, so we're actually the uh, the music. The da -na 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 -da -na -na. It's, mm. it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've made our way through the tutorial. Deadly experiment. Hey, uh, what we're doing is causing like these monsters to be around. Maybe we should stop. I guess and it's a like, deadly experiment. Bro, we making money, dog. <laughs> oh fuck, this is I'm gonna throw up. So Tom, I thought I thought she was talking about something personal, not uh, uh, that that shouldn't be streamed. And then I heard her say, usually like pro killing or not pro killing it or something. And I'm like, wait, what the fuck is she talking about? And then I, I realized it was The Witcher. <laughs> yeah, she she's upset. I walked out and she was like, she was like, Tom, I don't want to kill it. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, there's a basilisk and there's a guy and he says, like, just don't go in this area. And like, uh, but people keep doing uh, going in there and they're dying. And he's and he, she's like, I agree. Like, they're stupid. Like, I don't want to kill this basilisk. Like, it's just like it's this is its area. And I was like, yeah, you can just keep playing. I'm sure you'll be able to choose maybe not to kill it. I was like, Geralt really doesn't like killing unless he has to. And she was like, oh, it better. <laughs> Oh, we're interfering with, with its environment? And with yet, that guy? But we'll inversely 
kill any human on a whim. <laughs> like, <laughs> once again, we're the we're the bad invasive species, so I think you know. <laughs> What um, was the uh, what was the event in The Witcher where the, all the monsters came from? It's a cool word. Wild hunt? No, no, no. It's like the uh, they they did talk about it in the show. It's like the oh, main oh, convergence. Convergence, or... yeah, it's, yeah. It's a cool yeah. word. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Tom, go ahead and start up the experiment, and yeah, just do that first experiment there. You see, you have a bunch of options kind of on your timeline. It shows you what you start the mission with. Uh, mm -hmm. You got the, you got the a gun, pistol. pistol, grenade, and your uh, your brainer. And your mission is to it's DNA hunter collect infected DNA samples. Okay. And, and, and DNA. You Tom, know, little I broke, fun my time was a minute and 45 seconds. Ooh. So you kill the stuff and you pick it up. Like they drop the stuff, the DNA. Kill the stuff, pick it up, do it faster than Frank. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's going to, I don't think I'll be able to do it. Here we go. Three, two. Ow! <laughs> uh, so Tom dying uh, treated to a zombie munching He's on his eating body my knee. yeah that's the tastiest part all right we'll see if tom, tom on second try lessons. can do a minute 45. why would i need to take cover against something that can only walk <laughs> that's a good question shit, tom. I didn't see you. it is a very I think, I think one of them can spit can't they i thought i got spit on i survived 118 118 what? holy God. cow damn it tom and now we're looking at the second mission, spicing it up. So the first mission, we were just collecting some DNA. And this one, uh, we're spicing it up. This time, we're collecting cumin. Cumin? And paprika. To that end, I've given you weapons to survive the carnage. Use them well, and you may live to see another day. That's the mission? Mm-hmm. I, I was given yeah. the gun self, so he was with me? Um, it's very unclear at the beginning that Who's uh, writing th these? these are just training kind of simulations. Oh, this um, is not real. I died twice in, in well, a simulation. Well, living and dying seems to be real. <laughs> you um, die in the game, you die in real life. That seems yeah. like bad training if you're it's training. It's not. I mean, the die. first one was like weeding out like recruits that aren't good enough. So, I was not your If you shit your pants. But you know. we're spicing it up by collecting more DNA. But you got a different oh, gun my, this time, oh, I think. I'm just getting, oh, no, that's all I'm doing? No, it, never mind. Yeah, you're just doing the exact same thing again. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it there is. It is. Uh, There's that other gun on the ground back where you started, Frank. Nah, I don't care. <laughs> this, I think this gun's the best gun. There you go. <laughs> 141 for uh, for Frank. So that, that, all right, Tom with two. All right, let's jump to the next one. Since these, uh, I mean, they're really mixing it up. That one's called spicing it up. God, um, this is the. This this, one I swear to God. It says happy birthday. Here's a shotgun. Put it to good use. It's it's where all shotguns come from. Is it from. really our Brief birthday? Cases on the ground <laughs> yeah march 14th it's uh it's this character's birthday oh wow it's a rough birthday <laughs> you're doing what you love oh cool we're collecting oh, dna the, samples that sounds fun oh yeah, yeah you gotta get 20 dna samples again guys come on everyone just attacked me not cool you didn't press the button to put pick it up oh my god <laughs> i just died there's a gun there it is there it is everything is meat everything <laughs> is meat Return to the meat and then be become the meat again. God, oh, it takes fur to fucking reload. I did reload, it. Though, I did it, everyone. One thirty-four. Oh, he's three away. You can do it, Frank. Shift to run. Remember. One seventeen. Point oh. for Frank. Oh, we're supposed to collect DNA in this one. <laughs> yeah. What's that like? I don't, I don't this know. This is the I... hardest difficulty level of the simulator. Yeah, yeah, it's a oh, simulator, no. apparently. Man, if, if you would attack those people without those, so all those theatrics, Frank, then you'd be able to kill them faster. There's a close. range. The range yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah, the range sucks because sometimes he like, does this, like, I'm going to do a cool jump in the air while I swing at him. I get but bit like, every time. Damage while that happens, yeah. Yeah, uh, oh my god, I just Frank, did the jump uh, animation press, and I died. Press V, Frank, while you have your gun out, and you can do a quick melee. Victor. I yeah. did the jump animation and it killed me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you gotta just don't don't be so theatrical, Tom. I I didn't want him. Hey, I'm a New York police cop. I'm gonna beat you to death with a <laughs> pistol. Oh, do I have to go downstairs? Welcome I to Big Apple. So, yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> you One dirty. more, Frank. Very exciting stuff. A minute forty-two or a minute forty-one, with Frank. 
Nice thing about this bioterror incident is it gave us the Cerberus. They're fast and adept at locating the enemy. Is the gun called a Doberman pincer? I I don't think that would that would be fun. The pistol says blackjack and then the gun says Doberman pincer. I don't know. Is what... it really? Does that mean is it like it pinces the Dobermans? It pincers the Dobermans. The, the, what does a blackjack do? <laughs> <laughs> um, are you collecting DNA samples? Uh, yes, shockingly. Well, you shot it in Look the face. Look at them sleeping! Look, they're not even fighting me! I'm well, just you keep killing running up and killing dogs. them. Let sleeping dogs lie, Tom. There it is. There it is. I survived! Alright, what was your time? 131.95. Get that DNA. That Dino DNA. 109. Oh, Frank, you're doing so Frank. good, Frank. Securing the location has nothing to do with collecting samples, but I imagine... Oh, no! It doesn't! Yeah, it's this different. is the first one that is not collecting samples. <laughs> Unlike before, now you won't be able to run away. So I've secretly increased the locations of hidden weapons. The rest is up to you. Uh, on my first playthrough, I got burnt out just about here, I think. <laughs> yeah, this this isn't particularly fun. <laughs> it's, not, it's not that it's... um. Tell uh, me the vibes. I mean, part of what was frustrating is like like this like brainer weapon right like you said like that the, the idea that like using something that's not a specialized tool for killing zombies is actually better just hitting them with the butt of the gun <laughs> yeah it's like frustrating that you'd create like it feels like in play testing you'd create an animation and then you'd be like hey when we jump it like makes it really bad like <laughs> we need to speed up the animation we need to do something and then for them to be like nah <laughs> <laughs> It just seems weird. I don't like that when the dogs don't see you, how they're just like very normal dogs. It makes me <laughs> sad to kill them. Does the dog die dot com. Yes, repeatedly in this game. <laughs> in fact, you kill them, they turn into goo, and then come back and you kill them again. Tom actually... Tom came in at it. 2 minutes 23. Wow. What was Frank? 3 minutes something, right? Wow. I did weird. it, everyone. Yeah, everyone everyone was doubting. Everyone said no, not Tom. <laughs> but uh, proved them all wrong. <laughs> all those, I, really, I all have to recover all, all the briefcases. <laughs> yeah, now you've got to find the briefcases. Collection training. You, you got to learn how to collect. Have you ever experienced in your life having to pick something up <laughs> that you didn't have before? Thank no. God we have this training. <laughs> right. <laughs> Be surprised how much we ran into that. Just a lot of people that were. How the fuck? You said you you just do F at something. <laughs> oh my god, what's this? Oh no, oh. Frank! Please don't, Frank! No. Oh my god, I climbed a wall. Oh yeah, you can you can scramble up walls pretty pretty well. I did it on accident though. It was very disorienting. Oh, I thought oh, you had it there, Frank. Like... Oh, God oh, damn it. no, Frank. He was one away. <laughs> it takes forever to open those fucking... The zombies. <laughs> Cooperate. <laughs> the zombie. Hey, ah! hey. <laughs> what do we do? Just run in circles until I find shit? I mean, there's giant indicators on your... You're a giant indicator. Wow. Can dogs chase Fuck me? Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Minute 22 Guys. for Frank. Guys. Guys. Survival's at hand. He's just, I don't know where to go, Tom's though. Tom's got one more. He's following the indicators. You gotta rush to that door, boy. Yeah, charge that door. There you go. There he is. He got a minute. Nine! Oh, my God. <laughs> Did I do it? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. Tom is the in the lead was, with 4.5 I, to I hit four. no one. I shot nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you just sprinted. <laughs> I held, I, and multiple times I climbed walls without knowing I was going to. <laughs> and just rolled with it like I meant it. I was like, yeah, okay, uh, now I'm up. <laughs> so they say these Ganado have been infected with a dummy Plaga, a weakened form of the parasite. Now that's the uh, the, the Plaga, Plaga? That, that's the thing Wait, from... Wait, is this not Abraham Jackson? Uh, I think that's oh, still no. Abraham Jackson saying it. Village where it all started, right? Yeah, yeah. Abraham Jackson's the person talking to you. So this is not obviously Resident Evil Village, but this is Resident Evil, the, the village from Resident Evil 4, which I think looks, it should look somewhat familiar when you get out to the center of it. I thought it was five. Mm. Four. Oh, okay. Yeah, the, pl the Plaga Plague is from four. 
Well, I mean, Plaga, I think, continues. Oh, it's I think, the same like, parasitic thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but you for... you Italian motherfuckers! This is... Yeah, this is for... This is the one that had... What was the blonde guy's name? Lee? Leon? Leon. Yep, Leon. Yeah. The fucking birds? You got a bird on your head, Frank. What's going on with that? Frank? Wait, what am I... What's, what am I doing? Oh, I'm just killing things. Got one of those... Got one of those DNA missions. Oh, my God! Wait, I don't know if these people are bad! Oh, yeah, they, they punish oh, you bad. with their axes. They're bad, for they're sure. Italian. They're Italian. Oh, my they're, God! They're in Spain, first of all. Oh, wow, it shows the happy person who killed me afterward. His head's a little big. <laughs> I guess because it has the plaga in it. Yeah, it has to have the parasite in there. Frank, did you? have you not died? He has not. No. He's killed a lot wow. of birds. Wow. Killed a lot of Italians. They're, Frank, they're you Spanish. did way they better than Spanish. me then, because... <laughs> Oh no, I'm out of the bullets. Spanish. Now nah, I'm gonna hit you with the bagun. <laughs> New Yorker style. Wow. Oh, I survived. Frank, in a minute 16. I literally beat a group of them to death. So I'll explain the mechanics of this game a little bit. It does have a modern Resident Evil feeling controls. That is that it's third person over the shoulder with a heavy emphasis on the cover system. This game has an emphasis on what? the cover system, <laughs> not that any of the other games have had an emphasis on the cover system. It's almost always got a prompt for you to press a button to go charging towards a wall, which I don't think I've actually seen you guys do in the direction that you're looking to take cover. Oh, 116? Once Are you again, kidding? Once again, Tom beat me. Yeah, but, but he got shit. he got he got that on the second try. So should I give him half a point for that one? No, give him oh. full point. Full point. I give gotta give, you, I gotta give you a half a point then, Frank, because you beat it give on the, the first full go. Monty. I, I think that's a good idea. Me, All right. Yeah, that sounds fair. So there are a number of zombies <laughs> around at any given time, and they are very much cannon fodder, given you have the ammo. It feels like to me what you would expect uh, Resident Evil to to feel like if it was trying to be Gears of War. That's how it plays. I mentioned it has a modern Resident Evil feeling controls. However, when you're running, it does have the tank controls. You can't really turn when you're when you're sprinting. Let's talk about the development real quick, though. This was made and published by Capcom, and this is this is not an outsourced piece of material using Resident Evil franchise. It was done in-house at their Osaka studio, their headquarters. Announced in 2015 at Tokyo Game Show for a 2016 release, this game, as they pitch, aims to provide a deep, concentrated multiplayer shooter experience like those offered by contemporary esports. This title packs in classic Resident Evil gameplay elements such as menacing zombie hordes, We've stripped out excessive theatricality and constant respawning and pruned away the story elements. So that is that is what they are aiming to do. I want to pause for a second just to un unpack that. So my read of it is that Capcom sees the popularity of esports such as, you know, what it was in 2016 is Counter-Strike, Overwatch, Call of Duty. Those are the biggest FPS esports e games. Capcom sees that and they're like, we can do this. What franchise should we use? Probably the puzzle-based horror game with bad camera controls and brutal inventory management, right? So <laughs> that's that's what they do. They People love how Resident Evil controls. And uh, they just need to remove the story and they're good to go. You got a competitive multiplayer. Um, obviously, I, I disagree strongly with their decision to do that. Um, I've said harsh things about Resident Evil controls in the past on this podcast. So for them to take this IP and say, yeah, competitive shooter, I that's what Resident Evil has going for it. I, I don't think that's them playing to their strength. But that being said, this game does use the Unity engine rather than Capcom's own MT framework engine, which they've always used for the Resident Evil game. So if it doesn't quite feel like, you know, as you're running running around, uh, it doesn't feel like any particular Resident Evil game, that, that may be why. It's a different engine entirely from what Rock Paper shotgun that saw at the time they wrote that it sounds like they're going for a game with cautious movement consideration of space with an analog cover system that lets you peek as much as you want to at the cost of accuracy along with planning your weapon choice for the space that you're in and also equipment that you use to manipulate the pve aspects which is the zombies um, and this would be at the planned discount game price so 30 dollars at launch um, a little more on the developer publisher, Capcom, you know, giant Japanese video game developer, creator of Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, Street Fighter, Mega Man, Devil May Cry, Dead Rising, Marvel vs. Capcom, Lost Planet, Onimusha, those are all the big ones they've got. We've talked about them previously with, uh, you guys remember when we talked about, we talked about Capcom before? We did a Capcom game. It was a remake. Oh, I don't know. Jeez. 
It's an arcade game turned reboot. Keep going. Keep hinting classic, until one of us gets classic, it. Classic like NES uh, early game that got a gritty reboot. That, oh, is this the the, the uh, Bionic Commando? Bionic Commando, yeah. Yeah, gra- grab you a point for that, Tom. Um, is Frank there? I feel like he would have gotten it oh, faster. Sorry, yeah, I, I, w- I was gonna say bionic arm, uh, and then I was too busy uh, shooting. <laughs> bionic birds. wife, bionic wife arm. Yeah. Oh. As as the game shambles along towards the release, a few months out, another trailer comes out, and journalists are commenting that the battlefield maps of the cult town from Resident Evil Four make them excited to see, like, oh, look at these maps from Resident Evil Four, and the tactical third person teams scrambling over the roofs is interesting, and that the zombies are seemingly ignoring players in the trailers that they're watching. It's kind of weird that zombies are secondary to the PvP, and in fact, Rock Paper Shotgun's article on this trailer, they're like making suggestions about what they wish the game was and how it could have been improved before it's even coming out so not a great start um, but the game is released in june of 2016 actually right around the time some big news about resident evil 7 biohazard um comes out and it was a little bit of a whiplash because like they're announcing with resident evil 7 it's, it's pitched as getting back to the roots about wandering around in a mansion there's more survival horror focus because six was v- much more action based and not as well received so a bit odd for capcom to declare like we're going back to what works with resident evil action horror and by the way here's a half-priced game with tactical sliding and melee weapon called the brainer and vaulting and <laughs> which sprinting. isn't that right yeah exactly so which reminded me like resident evil 7 was called biohazard but uh the name resident evil is actually the american name um for the series it's just called biohazard in in japan but uh, the name resident evil uh thoughts was that ever a good name or are we just used to it i think we're just used to it because it doesn't really make any sense huh. Yeah, it, it seems to me just... It just makes me feel like there's, there's somebody bad that lives in that house. Right, like, who's the resident of this mansion? Evil? <laughs> that's. I, I feel like that's how they came up with the name for the first for the first game. It's funny because, uh, uh, and I think the first game was based largely on a mansion. Yeah, yeah. the whole, for, whole first game was inside the mansion, Spencer Mansion. So I, I feel like for... The better question would be like, was it a good... Yeah, was a good name for that game, and I think you could argue yes. Right. But then when when it succeeded, then it's just no forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's just like every, every, it doesn't make sense for anything else. For sure. Although Biohazard, I would argue, definitely. Yeah, Biohazard makes sense for the entire series because yeah, they've not stuck to the T virus at all. Um, in fact, and I've... it's like the, a home. It's very centered on. A yeah. home and the people who live there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Maybe that that's a Resident Evil. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, you've played pretty much most of them in the, at least the recent, recently accessible ones. Have you played any of the remakes? Yeah. You know what? I I haven't actually. Okay. I haven't yeah, I, any of the I remakes, haven't played so. any. Either. I've yeah yeah no. I'm not sure. I've heard good things about um the remakes of of one and two. I've played zero hours of Resident Evil Village. Um, but I very much enjoyed watching uh, quite a few people play it. And uh, so, yeah, I, I tell you, I very much enjoyed that. My second fake of, answer. Of four? Uh, Village. Oh, no, the newest one. newest one, Village, yeah. And, Grace and I beat that one. Yeah, yeah I've, I think I've seen the entire game. Um, I've just just been watching different people play it, and I've, I've very much enjoyed it. Um, these games, like the horror games, it's good to experience them with other people. I don't think sitting alone in a room is the best way to experience a horror movie or game. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, Biohazard, I think nailed it a, a li- at least that like kind of like horror scary aspect mm-hmm. a little bit better whereas village um really does lean into like uh, like very quickly you have a gun or guns and you're you feel like Equipped. okay i can shoot my way out of a situation mm-hmm. um whereas biohazard there's there are a few times where the answer is like you run away oh yeah you know? and it's it I I liked that I yeah. liked that that fear of a situation that was the where it's a giant baby too but uh, yeah the giant baby was yeah absolutely <laughs> terrifying yeah yeah my second had the big vampire mommy yeah that's village yeah that's village yeah yeah um, and that was actually a really fun part of the game like navigating the big mansion that mm-hmm. vampire mommy was in <laughs> uh, that was pretty fun uh, that was it was good. Uh, I, I, when you get into like the late game you're just uh, like i said you're just more equipped so it just it just felt more like like there's an instance where you're like attacking a werewolf fortress yeah chris you said you see yeah and um i mean that's just full-on 
like first person assault. shooter yeah. <laughs> yeah like there's there's no like nothing scary you're just like rambo you know <laughs> right <laughs> ethan yeah. winter rambo yeah right. that's a good role for him and my yeah my second fake answer would be dino crisis which as we've discussed before with capcom um it's just they had some success with resident evil and they're like let's do resident evil with dinos i played a lot of that game back in the day uh, but my real answer of actually playing a resident evil game um, is probably nemesis that's the one that i enjoyed playing myself the most i i've heard that it doesn't age very well at all and it's been a really long time but i have good memories of how ominous that game was and the premise that there's this thing that you cannot kill that's chasing you and every once in a while they're like oh, i can kill it this time but you just end up wasting all your ammo and dying and uh <laughs> but it's, it's uh, it was a good premise for the game at the time at my age um I, i've heard people didn't enjoy it as much and the remake wasn't well received but so i did want to point out i'm watching frank on stream here i don't know if it stood out to you guys uh how you hold your guns in this game it's a very it's a very aggressive third person kind of view but uh if you have a pistol out just do a little aim down sight or just walk around with your pistol out when you get a second frank yeah that right there just look look how you're holding that thing like your character oh that's bizarre <laughs> your your pistol like the chamber is directly next to your ear you've got a helmet on but there's no way you're even looking down in the sights <laughs> yeah no yeah you're right that's in no world would you do that. It looks super fucking tactical, but it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like no, I, it makes, yeah, on a few levels, it makes no sense. You're right. Like you, you can't even one, tell where your gun's pointed. I mean, you think you'd be <laughs> blowing out your eardrums even with, um, you know, even with, with like ear protection. Ear protection. And yeah. if your ear protection's that good, you're not hearing shit <laughs> anyway. Yeah. And but yeah, your aim, like you can't, you can't see where you're aiming at all. In fact. That's also true with the submachine gun. So I won't bore you with the details of all the Resident Evil series. Like I said, not a not a master of the lore by any means, but we'll run through the games real quick here. Resident Evil, the first one, was a 1996 game for the PlayStation based in the Spencer Mansion. It has a 91 on Metacritic. It's a remake, got a 91 as well. Resident Evil 2 focuses on Leon and Claire Redfield escaping from Raccoon City. It had a 89 on Metacritic. Remake got a 91. 3 was Nemesis. You play as Jill Valentine just before the events of Resident Evil 2. The original got a 91. The remake got a lower 79. Resident Evil Code Veronica was kind of a spin-off. Came out in 2000 for Dreamcast only. It's considered the fourth uh, game of the original series and it got a 94. Resident Evil 4 was the GameCube one with a Leon and the president's daughter Ashley in a rural part of Spain as you're fighting infected villagers with mind controlling parasites it has a 96 on metacritic resident evil 5 was the ps3 360 game in west africa chris redfield and sheva shiva fighting villagers infected with las plagas oh was i wrong they have Las Plagas fighting with... Oh, maybe 4 and 5 is Las Plagas, that's why. And yeah, fighting... no, that's what I mean. Once once 4 comes out, yeah. from then on, it's like referred to as that. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, uh, infected by Las Plagas, fighting Wesker, and you find Jill, who was mind-controlled. Resident Evil 6 came out in 2012 and is off the rails a bit. Plot is very convoluted, has multiple campaign stories happening simultaneously. There's global terrorism, imposters, president becomes infected. It got a 67 on Metacritic. The um, then Umbrella Core came out in 2016. Then the uh, next year... Resident Evil 7 Biohazard came out. That one focuses on the, the one house and family, the Baker family. You're Ethan Winter and you're looking for your missing wife. This is an 86 on Metacritic. Then Resident Evil and Resident Evil 8 Village, or it's just called Resident Evil Village, is the 2021 game that picks up the same story three years later as Chris Redfield busts into your house and you end up in a village where you meet Vampire Mommy and the story is absolutely bonkers. Um, and there's been a bunch of side games along the way, like Code Veronica, like I said, Survivor was a light gun game and they're making their way through remastering the games as well but i do want to dedicate a little bit of time to 20, uh, 2012's game resident evil operation raccoon city this would be at least for some time known as the worst resident evil game this was co-developed by slant six studios and capcom it was a third person squad based shooter it's non-canonical but based around the events of raccoon city outbreak uh, slant six games developed a socom game so it would seem like a good fit there there's a little bit of gameplay from it yeah that one i heard here. about and i actually thought that one might have been cool uh yeah. I never got it. it okay, then the clip I'm showing right now, you got like, it's like special powers in a squad and her gun's lighting on, it's turning into like a flame gun and lighting lighting things on fire. But you're doing like, you're battling against other other operational squads, you know? Frank, have you completed this one yet? No, I hate it. Holy 
God, is it hard. <laughs> <laughs> I never actually tried that one. Um, I'm watching someone in Operation Raccoon City. Like, she's the melee one. She's just like punching and kicking the shit out of zombies. Oh, and one of the fun things about this is you can become infected and what becoming infected, like getting bitten for a second does is it gives you superpowers for a little bit, but your health drains while you're supercharged. Um, that game has about a 50% on Metacritic across versions. IGN in reviewing it said that an actual zombie outbreak would have been less tragic. And GameSpot said that it withers in the shadows of its superior alternatives. Though the game did sell 2, mi two million units, which they considered a big success, though the critical reception was challenging. So likely the reception of that game had an influence on them deciding to do their next kind of spin-off game in-house. I did it. Holy cow. To win, throw away any concept of doing it quickly. <laughs> let's jump over to online mode. I'm definitely giving Tom a point for that. Um, all right, let's try four survivors. Let's see if it boots up with that. Now here we can see there's ranked matches, public matches, friend matches, and you can gear out your character with different weapons. You can customize what? how your character looks. What? Oh, but they're all, a lot of the things are behind uh, level caps. You can change the colors of it though. Oh yeah, lots of different patches. Yeah, it's lots of customization. You have a bunch of different weapon sets you can set up. Oh wow, lots of different, let's <laughs> put stupid sights on your guns. Oh, it says three more players needed. Uh, are we just the only people in the world playing this game? <sighs> yeah, yeah we are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Just the us. I love this, this is the same as the other one where it's just like, oh, okay, we just are in the same game together, cool. I just joined the Umbrella Core Discord to see if anyone possibly playing right now. All right, well, let's, apparently we're not gonna be able to do four player. So let's back up and see if we can do the, the oh, team legit deathmatch one thing. Maybe we can all do, oh, this says three versus three. Oh, come on. No way. Oh, it says three more players needed. Oh no. That's even oh, worse. Oh no. So let's take a look real fast at Umbrella. Or, whoops. Right now, at this moment, there are five players online. So there's there's some people out there, man. There's a couple people. They may just oh fall gosh. into our group. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, on average, it looks like they're averaging about ten players in the world at any given time. Wow. That is that is what we're looking at. And now let's see. From the start of the game, 420 was the highest that it ever had. When it launched. You know what it reminds me of in a way is like I, I went on vacation this one time and went to this beach. It was a beautiful and it was it was a really cool beach, very beautiful. And it was it was just um it was just us, just our group that was there, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's something to be said, like you're on this big planet and like all these locations people go to, and it's kind of a cool thing to be like, it's just us, man. <laughs> I just think it's it's kind of cool in the, in some of these games where like if if there are only like ten people playing it in the world like this in a <laughs> weird way, it's like kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we could be doing anything, but we're the people that are here. <laughs> right? Exactly. Exactly. So there is a story, I suppose, that's played out through your kind of mission notes in the single player campaign. Um, now, to be clear, like what these missions are, it feels like a training sequence that's inside of a bigger game, like a virtual reality mission challenge that's that's an aside to the full game. But this is the whole game. It's 12 years after Umbrella's collapse, which happened in 2003, and the company's research and equipment has been sold on the black market. Bioterrorism has spiraled into a global threat. Um, this is from Resident Evil fandom site. The game is set in 2015. There's viral outbreaks everywhere. Entire districts are locked down and abandoned. And inside those districts, zombie hunters commit illegal activities for their own reasons. I don't know what any of that means, but you are Agent 3A7, <sighs> an everyman with an everyman kind of name. But you're set out on missions by superiors to test out equipment, mostly. Anyway, you're one of 10 competing organizations that's using special forces to obtain Umbrella Corporation 
information lost research. Sometimes you'll find yourself on maps that don't exist in the universe anymore, like for example, Spencer Mansion and Raccoon City, um, because uh, spoiler, Raccoon City isn't there anymore at the end of that game. But the voice in your head tells you that it's been recreated for training purposes. Okay, yeah, that's a good explanation, I guess. But uh, the game's story, as it were, continues on with you testing the gear and collecting samples until they start sending you on harder and harder missions trying to kill you. But in the very end, you succeed in all the missions, scaring your superiors. And that's the end of the campaign. The rest of the game is its main focus is on multiplayer, which uh, we are sitting in a lobby waiting for. <laughs> um, <laughs> so why was this game so poorly received? Here we are playing it on GGN. Because um, it's kind of mediocre throughout, but is it really bad, bad? Um, the YouTube channel Avalanche Reviews did a pretty in-depth look at the entire Resident Evil series. Um, they did a retrospective on every game and had some interesting insight. They mentioned that the games directly preceding this were Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2, which fans were upset the franchise had been such a departure from the series, including those games. We mentioned 5 and 6 as well. But uh, then for the 20th, 20th anniversary of this game, this comes out, which is very much not core to Resident Evil. It doesn't have a single-player experience almost at all. Furthermore, when it launched, it did have a fair amount of DLC, like paid DLC on launch, like extra guns in-game. And this kind of nickel and diming didn't go very well in 2016. I think we've gotten probably a little bit more used to it. <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's, it's all a little tricky to talk about like the development of this game because honestly, like very little is known about it. They announced it, they released a couple demos of it, they delayed it once, and then it just kind of came out and very little communication after that. Their last patch was, we're now adding Asian language supports. And then that was it. And uh, even why it's on this engine, I mentioned like they've always used their in-house engine that for some reason they built it on Unity and just no one really knows why. It just uh, it kind of exists. And that's usually how Capcom does communications, I think. So we'll do a little trivia here, uh, earn, earn some more points. Uh, what Resident Evil franchise game has the lowest Metacritic score? This one. <laughs> No, the other one. The other one, that I, uh, Raccoon City. Operation Raccoon City. Uh, I'm sorry, Frank. This one has the lowest score. God damn it. Yeah, that, Makes that sense, may though. give you a that may give you this a hint sucks. about what it has if you remember exactly. Uh, second worst. Raccoon City. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say you let Frank get that right. <laughs> it is not Raccoon City. Any second guess? God damn it. Resident Evil Survivor. That was a light gun game for the PlayStation. Uh, the lowest scoring game for the main series, though. Any guesses? Like a numbered one. Which which had the lowest scoring? Mm, I am going to say three. Nemesis? Okay. Frank? Seven? Uh, seven was Biohazard. No, seven was well-received. Oh, six. <laughs> Give you half a point because you got a second guess. Yes, yeah, six was the, was the lowest scoring from the main franchise. What is the highest scoring Resident Evil game on Metacritic? I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to go on a limit. I'm going to say Biohazard. Biohazard, seven. Okay, Frank? Uh, two Remastered? Two Remastered. It's uh, Two Remastered is high, but no. The highest scoring is Resident Evil 4. It is the highest Shit. scoring survival horror game on Metacritic and the 30th ranked game overall. Um, wow. Very high scoring game. Um, when was the first time they used voice actors in any of the Resident Evil games? Oh no! <laughs> Don't know enough about these. Resident Evil Four. Resident Evil Four. Um, okay. Uh, I'm gonna say earlier three. Three. Okay. This is kind of a trick question because in Resident Evil One, the 1996 game, they had live action video. Um, what? Yeah, and it is incredibly cheesy. Oh yeah, there's there's a, a internet investigation that's tracking down the actors. Yeah, and I, I looked up the actors' names, and um, like some of them, like because they filmed this in Japan using they sought out Caucasian actors to do this, and some of them is just like a one name name that like the actress who plays Jill Valentine's goes by. Really? Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a Justin Wang has a, a whole investigation into tracking down uh, the people. <laughs> And they, hey, they, come here. They apparently were very happy with how this came out. a little bit 
bit more like Hound of the Baskervilles with guns. <laughs> Cast. Chris Redfield. Oh man, I skipped ahead and it is amazing. Jill Valentine. Yeah, at the end. Rebecca Chambers. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just saw Rebecca Chambers. Albert Wesker. You see that? She's like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Resident Evil. Ramon Salazar from Resident Evil 4 is what? Is he a snake person? Is he a Napoleon looking fella? Is he an old wooden ship? Or is he he's an elongated spine guy with tentacles? Napoleon looking fella, he's a little guy. Yeah, yeah. Nap and he's got like the little colonial hats. Yeah, he Pilgrim does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, most people uh, love Resident Evil 4, but most people agree that this character is a bit of a joke. Name a way that Albert Wesker has died. And now Frank, I know no, you haven't you haven't played a lot of the games, but any any guess will do, honestly. Name a way that uh, Albert Wesker Mila has died. Jovovich kills him. Um, in, um oh yeah, yeah Mila Jovovich does kill him in one of the movies. Shoots him in the head with a like a like I think like a pistol. But in the games, he uh, melts inside of a volcano and dies. Yeah, yeah, but that didn't actually kill him. <laughs> do you remember Wait. what happened after that? Uh, it takes twin rocket launchers to kill him. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. He uh, He's dropped into a volcano, and then he reaches out with his tentacle arm and grabs and like plug, pay, yes. plays tug of war with a helicopter. Yes. And he sh they shoot him with two rockets, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they like spiral around each other like they never would in real life. Uh -huh. and it's, it's very it's cool epic. looking, though. <laughs> yeah. There, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There are scenes in that game that are, like, are ridiculous and at the same time amazing like <laughs> the fight scenes with wesker versus them mm -hmm. so some of those cutscenes are are fucking amazing like so you'll see <laughs> wesker who's been Look. injected with every single virus they've ever created Your he's like mr burns only delay the inevitable <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he can yep. he can phase around. Look, it's so he's still shoot. That's it, right there. He's still shooting at her, and then it as make he's sense getting he shot at, powers. he pulls out another. It's so cool. Don't, don't, That's don't some you top do. anime shit right there. Don't, you know what? You're uh, maybe that's I'm just showing my colors. Cause, um, <laughs> You're the guy who does not mind that they have a full-blown conversation in Attack on Titan while a a Titan's like a, a meter away from them and not closing Absolutely. the distance at all. A hundred percent, yeah, exactly. Oh, is it this one? He throws his glasses? That's not what I... Yes, that's a sick... Well, it's sick! Yeah, watch it. Watch the scene. He throws the glasses, look at this. And he's like, oh, catch the glasses. Oh, shit, I'm ready to get my ass whooped. <laughs> It's amazing! And he his glasses and back. he puts the glasses back on! Come on! The game is dead. That's the reality of the game these days, though. So from what they yep. pitch to what they produce, what do you what do you think? How's this game feel? What's the... What, enjoy anything about it? Hate anything about it? What they get right? What they get wrong? Yeah, you're right. I do... Oh, I often think that you eke out more fun from multiplayer, so it's sad that we didn't get to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know. Like, I... I I don't want to be like su like viciously critical, but it it just felt like there was like like when you think about play testing, right? Like you go through, you play the game, and they'll be like, "Hey, what do you think about like uh, did they do that?" <laughs> and, I, I, and like I just uh, there's like some things that happen that you're like seem obvious. Like for me, what sticks out more than anything is like you create this weapon, and you're like, "Hey, this is for a melee combat," and it's worse. Yeah, and then you add animations that have different speeds, which is nuts. Like, you could, it, it'd be fine to have, like, a speed, right? Like, it takes two seconds. But, and then come up with different animations that take two seconds. Yeah. And you want it to but be competitive, But then you're playing right? the lottery. Yeah, you don't, you don't want that in a competitive game. Yeah, it's nuts. It's yeah. nuts. It's nuts to be like, I hope I get the good one. Like, that's <laughs> crazy. That's like a bigger flaw than normal, I feel like, you know? Sure. Like, just to have, like, 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 you're creating something, like you said, competitive, but it's, like, you're just completely randomizing, like, these these actions. They shouldn't be like that. Yeah. And
And outside of that, I don't know. It, I guess it just it felt just really repetitive really quickly. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's a real bummer. We, we can't experience the game in full, but that's that's the state of the game right now. That's what we're talking about, I guess. So and, and, and you know what's funny? When you do the first play, uh, I don't know, what I was doing at least, it's, it's like they're prepping you for something, right? Yeah. <laughs> but then the something you're prepping for is what, the multiplayer? Uh, I would guess so, yeah. But as, as you were saying when we were playing the game, we, we didn't actually ever use the cover system because the single player is only against zombies. And why would you need to use a right. cover system against zombies? But the multiplayer would seem to be very much focused on cover although some of the feedback that i've heard is like oh well it, you don't really ever need it it doesn't make any sense to use this cover system that they've built um yeah even in multiplayer so the the main feedback that i've heard from the multiplayer game is once you get a group in there it actually makes much more sense to run around and melee than shoot people like the the movement is so fast that rather than shoot at people you should just run up to them and, and brain them I can see that actually because it it, it is fast and yeah. there's a lot of like tight corners. I could see how like unless you were camping in a spot where you had long visual lines yeah. that you could very easily turn a corner and just be on top of somebody. And we saw what the maps were like, like they are all that size that, and they intended that that's this, that's just the size of the maps that they have. It's, it's close yeah. quarter arena kind of um, combat. Right, so you're on top of people all the time. Yeah. There's yeah. no sense in having anything. Uh, it's built out cover system. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about what the critics thought. Um, what do you think the critics of this beloved series say? said about this game uh, i did already mention it is the lowest scoring one but uh what do you think frank 36 <laughs> why do you why do you think why do you wait why do you think 36 frank i was gonna say 32 but i feel like that's too low god damn it <laughs> wait uh, I, do i get the guess it doesn't matter now <laughs> wait no wait uh, it matters i get the guess too yeah do you you're gonna, you're gonna guess what are you gonna guess 36 <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't understand how Frank gets the score on the nose so often. <sighs> All right, so uh, let's read a couple of the critic reviews, and I'm going to send them to you guys. All right, Frank, what do you got there? CD Action says, 75. Umbrella Corpse Metascore suggests that it's one of the worst games of this generation, but if you look past its low budget and bugs, you'll see a fresh, unconventional shooter brimming with potential small innovations. Yeah, so uh, I kind of see where they're getting with it, but... Uh, after seeing the final product now, it uh, didn't happen. <laughs> potential right. is such a sh uh, it's, it's such a dumb thing to give to a finished <laughs> product. Scored on potential. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's got potential. Be like, I, did I, I... I wasn't looking for something that could be better in the future. I was looking for something <laughs> yeah. to be good now. Good right now. Right? I just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, um, what do you got? Okay, Game World Navigator Magazine. That's it was wordy. Yeah, it that's is. What, that's why it it is. <laughs> uh, every level is very small, and no matter where you decide to hole up, sounds like campers. I don't like these guys. <laughs> uh, it would be easy for enemies to flank you. It's not bad by itself, but such design makes cover system. Okay, that's just not good. Which was to become one of Umbrella Corp's trump cards redundant. So it comes as no surprise that combat quickly devolves into chasing after one another with one hit kill axe in hand. Of course, it's hard to talk about tactics or team play in this lumberjacks paradise. Mm -hmm. yeah, they give it a 51. All right. Edge magazine for the PS4 version gives it a 30. There's little satisfaction in downing an enemy who can't see you less than getting flattened by an unseen assailant. True words. The Jimquisition gave it a 25. <laughs> If you hated Operation Raccoon City, I urge you to try it again after playing Umbrella Corps. <laughs> You'll think it's fucking amazing. <laughs> at least it doesn't have microtransactions. Weirdly, at least not yet. And one more, uh, Frank. GameSpot gave it a 30. Its systems are either unreliable or illogical, and as a result, it feels like it's impossible to get a foothold. The first time an enemy hits you when they uh, should have been dead, you may shrug it off. When it happens the dozenth time, you'll probably wonder why you're playing Umbrella Corpse at all. There's ultimately no good excuse. Yeah, there you go. So a 36 overall from the critics this game got for a half-priced game. So we've heard from the snobby critic, but is this game someone else's treasure? Well, not, not particularly. It has uh, almost... 
Uh, it has a mostly negative review on Steam with 900 reviews. Here are a few reviews from the people. Tom, who you got there? Is Rim says, I can't think of a better way to celebrate the 20th cent." Oh, 20th anniversary of the Resident Evil series. The series has gone through so much, but it's nice to know that it was all leading up to this masterpiece <laughs> of digital entertainment. Recommended. Nice. Uh, Multi Kill says on 7 7 2021, player count one. Me. Dead game, avoid at all costs. Not recommended. Frank, you got one more there. Grim says you crawl as fast as you walk. I've played a couple of rounds with my friend. Role-playing is uh, Fully Armed Worms. Best game ever, 10 out of 10. It's the best <laughs> game of 2016, no doubt. Good work, Capcom. Best armed racing worm simulator ever. <laughs> That's actually a phenomenal <laughs> idea. Yeah, and if I really only wanted we could to get do into it a match. as well. You, I mean, you guys probably noticed when you were forced to crawl, like you crawl very fast. <laughs> as to like most of the reviews are negative for this game, it is because it's it's a dead game. These games that rely on multiplayer, like uh, what was another one we've done? Uh, oh, Alien, I guess, uh, Colonial Marines, and we've done another one as well. It's just when there's we're the only ones in the lobbies, it's yeah, it's tough when it. Oh, uh, Hyperscape, that was the one I was thinking of. A, a battle royale that depends on you know big lobbies. When it starts to die off, the whole game just dies. So, all right, well, what about our scores? The time we gave this game a score it deserves using our Garbage Valley score. Our scoring system here is a little bit unique. Most use a zero to ten scale, but it leaves a little appreciation for games that are so bad they're good. Not only have you got your masterpieces of entertainment like uh, Resident Evil Four, I guess I would get near a ten. Then your lower scoring ones like Resident Evil Survivor. We keep going all the way past zero to negative 10. Once it gets into the negatives, it starts getting good again. So a negative 10 gives you just as much enjoyment as a positive 10. And zero is a waste of your time. It's in the middle of Garbage Valley. So where would you place it on the scale? Is it a good game or a bad game? Positive or negative? And what, what amount of enjoyment do, do you get out of it? Frank, what do you think? Yeah, it's hard to... Hard to say. Like, we just we only play the single player. But then again, that's yeah, all there is these days. Yeah, that sucks. So... But you get a feel for uh, what the controls are and, you know... Yeah. I'm going to say a positive two. A positive two for this game. All right. Tom, what do you think? I'm going to say, I'm going to say negative two. A negative two. Okay. What, what pushed it into the negatives for you? I, you know what? I, I guess I just feel like that at, at some point, some of this stuff is like formulaic, you mm -hmm. know, and like, just, I, I don't know if you can like give credit to being able to be like, yeah, like they're shooting and you know, like, I, I don't know, <laughs> it, like, and then like beyond, shoot. I don't know, beyond that, like it, it just seems like there's like a lot of flaws and like, it just it wasn't like fleshed out and a lot of things that made it like unfun that, like I said, that I feel like if you, if you play tested it, you'd be like, that's not fun. I need yeah. to fix it. <laughs> like they weren't even like huge things that it was like it would be way too hard to fix this it was like that's stupid we should you know like yeah yeah i don't and know I think so it, I mean, this game probably wasn't like we saw a peak of like 200 players to begin with and yeah when it, a game's based around multiplayer and it dies off quickly if you have those, if you launch with those problems you're not going to keep your base and it's gonna be impossible for anyone to enjoy it because the lobby sizes are so small yeah from like two weeks into this game and there were some reviews that are like well, the game's already dead which is wild wow you know, they, yeah, they were this wild. game for uh, more than a year and uh I don't know. Should they delayed it more? Was it ever going to be successful? I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, for yeah. So what what I put down was the positives. This game does actually have quite a bit of customization as far as your own character. You could have made them your own, your own color palettes and styles and stuff, and a bunch of different outfits that you could unlock. I think like they put in the work to make that part of it an interesting online experience um, with a lot of unlockables to level your character up uh, or, or seemingly like progression. So th they did the work there, but the game feels like it, it it does have the feel of a game like it wants to be taken seriously in the esports space like they were saying the movement feels really? very well as far as the movement and everything goes it goes like it's got like the twitch aiming uh it feels like you should be racing through doing like head tapping but this close quarter third person combat all of it just feels terrible and like we've been calling this a third person game but it's it's not a third person game like PUBG is third person. It's like a GoPro sitting on your shoulder. It, it it's a very narrow field of view. It's but and it's just very awkward and uncomfortable to play it. And like like you were saying, Tom, it's like first person, but there's a 
a guy in the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's a guy just in front of your camera <laughs> to the side a little bit um but and like you were saying you get stuck in these animations and it's it, the movement doesn't feel good it like you can do these wall scrambling stuff but it usually happens on accident um well i never did one intentionally yeah. every time every, every time i was climbing walls like oh look at what i'm doing <laughs> And when I was playing the, like, some of the things that we did, like, it felt like it's built for, like, time trials, you know, like, online leaderboard kind of stuff, and that's okay, but, like, the way that the zombies move around and stuff, that wasn't very, uh, that wasn't a very appealing, I don't know, even if you look at the trailers for this game, which we, we watched the gameplay footage they show, it felt like the player was having a hard time controlling the camera and aiming and stuff. Um, and that's what the game feels like. It's just, I, I hate to say it, but fighting the zombies in Metal Gear Survive was so much more fun and reliable than this. So, yeah, I, I, I did not enjoy this. Like I said, I played it almost like six months or almost a year ago and was like, I don't know. And I really thought we'd be able to do one online game, but couldn't even do that. So for the, for the trash fire that it is, I'll, I'll go negative, uh, I'll go negative three three with it i no negative four because i think it's funny to look at resident evil and be like yes let's make it a competitive online shooter i think that's a crazy decision so yeah negative four for me in multiplayer like you always have the zombie deterrent things on like the zombies just completely ignore you in multiplayer and they only go after you if you shoot them or someone shoots your back and the disruptor thing goes off then all the zombies will attack you so it could be strategic to try and shoot your opponent's disruptor jammer zombie jammer they call it or um shoot zombies around them them to get them enraged shoot them in the head uh that is that is something that is not fully fleshed out uh i believe (laughs) (laughs) where is raccoon city what state um i'm gonna say michigan from frank all right Michigan. Um, no, I think it's in the northeast. I think Michigan's in the north. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm not saying Michigan's not. I'm just saying like. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna say it's uh in Jersey. <laughs> Jersey, Raccoon City in Jersey. That makes sense. Um, it, you does, all, it does make sense. You would only know this if you had read the books, apparently, the accompanying material, but it is Pennsylvania. It's uh, Raccoon City. Wouldn't have guessed what? that. I know. Uh, who? Is, what is the name of the helpless sidekick from Resident Evil 4? The helpless sidekick? Yeah, the daughter of the president that you're, that you're oh, rescuing. Sh- Amy. Amy? No. Nope. Ashley. Ashley. It is Ashley. I'll give you a point there. Uh, oh, sorry, the movie Resident Evil, was it considered successful? Yes. Uh, well, give, give me the, give me the, like, in, in what way was it successful? Monetarily. <laughs> Monetarily, it was successful. Frank, what do you think? Yeah, box office numbers. What do you think the, like, the Metacritic for Resident Evil, the first movie, is, though? Shit. <laughs> 78. 78, uh, Frank I'm, says. I'm going to say 60. Uh, it is it is almost on par with this game it has a 33 from metacritic (laughs) it and its sequel are on roger ebert's most hated list in 2005 but fuck that dead guy (laughs) but uh it it made money um because it's got some sequels and can you name any of the sequels extinction Uh, extinction for frank okay we did that's uh, yeah that's what any others they're just the the silliest after life there's another one yeah oh my god Uh uh-huh that's three and extermination? four. Nope, not extermination. How many are there? <laughs> Genesis? Know. No, that's a good name, though. They should have that's had one good, name. That's a good name. That's the next when he, one. In fact, when he said it, I was like, fuck, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are, including the first one, there are one, two, three, four, five, six movies. Holy shit. Yep. Napalm and Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Oh, yeah, I hate myself. <laughs> I hate myself so much. Two cha- The last two entries are Retribution and the Final Chapter. Yeah, um, those are the movies. And did you know uh, that there's a reboot of the Resident Evil movies? Did, did you know that? Like coming out. It has been out for a year. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it's been out. Yeah, it has a 44 I, on Metacritic. Is there a series going on Netflix? 
I think maybe you're thinking of this because you saw it somewhere in passing, or maybe I don't know. Maybe there's a Netflix one, but the, the, the animated there is an animated one on Netflix. Oh, is there? Uh, the, the movie, the reboot, is called Resident Evil: Welcome to Raccoon City. It came out in 2021, and it uh, one of the reviews said it is an affectionately faithful adaption that further proves its source material is ill-suited for the big screen, which is a painful review, I feel like. But uh, all right, that brings us to the end. We made it, we did it. We didn't get a single multiplayer game, but that's the reality of the situation. Um, you, you know what, just to comment on that, you nailed it before, is that the best way to describe Resident Evil at its best is it's like a good anime. <laughs> yeah, and, and the, I, don't, I, the, I love the silly anime. I, I and really plots, do. Yeah. Uh, I, I, but I just mean like as a as a film, as like a sit down, and it's going to get wrapped up in under two hours kind of deal. I feel like it, it would be lost on people to do something that's an an anime that's yeah. not familiar with that. You know. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, all right, well, our final scores here was Tom 10.5 to Frank's 8. Uh, Frank really slept on that one, so that's all right. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Um, but congratulations, Tom. What I found here, uh, I could do some. Okay, okay. Do you think you feel proud if you crossed the finish line? Like you ran, you ran, you crossed the finish line, and you turned around, <laughs> and your opponent was on the ground <laughs> asleep? <laughs> Uh, you doesn't matter. Like, I did it, guys. <laughs> what you win this evening is uh, I found a bunch of Resident Evil stuff actually, and the most I think quintessential predictable thing would be like the little vial that they had, you know, from the first movie that was very picturesque. But instead, there's apparently a Resident Evil Two board game, and they have these little like functional doors. Um, so it's a little little pr 3D printed functional door, which is very classic to the first couple Resident Evils of opening doors. You know, they have little door open animations. So I, I love thought it. that was a nice little prize <laughs> that you that you won in a fair competition so. <laughs> with a sleeping opponent. <laughs> he didn't miss any opportunities. To, uh, yeah, I could have earned more points if I was better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what held him back. <laughs> All right. Um, if I was conscious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you for joining me on this uh, this. It's game. That's what we can say about it. It's an executable <laughs> file that runs on your computer. So that's Resident <laughs> Evil. No, it's not even Resident Evil. It took Resident Evil out of the title. Umbrella Core. Clips in this podcast were used in compliance with a U.S. copyright fair use exemption for criticism and commentary. Garbage Game Night makes no claims to ownership over any games played and has no affiliation with any developer or publishing company. For additional references on cited articles and quotes, check our episode-related blog at garbagegamenight.com. Or if you have a comment about the game we reviewed or have a suggestion, drop us a line.